She's still laughing. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Welcome to Five Lemons Left. We're the real stuff. The lemons making lemonade. So pucker up because we're going to be discussing our life's lessons and the nitty gritty details of our spiritual journeys. Hey y'all, I'm Amanda. And I'm Drusilla. I'm Melissa. Hello, this is Morgan. And I'm Penny. Welcome to our podcast today. <laughs> oh my god that hits the spot oh my gosh yeah it really helps i oh. mean laughter helps it's it is so the good. best medicine laughter is the best medicine today we're kicking it off just by having a quick check-in how's your day going and then we're going to be diving into facing our fears Ooh, what that looks like What are the automatic negative thoughts? What is that? What's the preset on a radio station and how we can change it, reset that? Yeah. So what's going on today? Melissa, you said something about a roller coaster. Describe that feeling for us. Um. I have just been working really hard all day and um, I've had really great news and I've had to deal with a person who was really tough and um, I have just, I feel like I've had the highs, high, the high highs and the low lows Mm -hmm. and all in one day um, and I just need to center myself and just be grounded, get grounded, get my feet on the ground, settle down, um, connect to the universe and just let it go. Um, and laughing that little bit helped a ton. It just like let that little shh off the steamer. So I'm feeling much better, but it is, I honestly felt like I I wonder if it's a full moon because it's so wacky today. I know it's not. It's not. Yeah. <clears throat> what about you, Penny? Yeah. You know, I had a funky, I had a funky attitude all day today too. Like, but I woke up. Okay. And then it just like went downhill. And I think it's our atmospheric pressures changing here. We're having a, I live in Northern California, just outside of San Jose. Um, are you still there? Have I lost you? Yeah, we're all here. Oh, you're here. We're that here. is so weird. My Zoom screen just went away and said I was signed out of my Zoom account. And now I can't find you guys. Well, you just <laughs> keep <laughs> well, keep talking. You and the day continues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm signing back into my Zoom account. Anyway, I started out having a pretty good day. And then it just like went downhill. We're having this atmospheric river come through. Oh, there you are. Found you again. <laughs> um, and it was pouring rain since like 1 a.m. And then now it's really windy. And that's a really bad combination. Saturated ground with very high winds in California, where all the trees are heavy with rain. So I don't know if it's that that happens, like, you know, the, I, I don't know if you guys ever heard, but uh, teachers in schools could tell when um, the, the barometric pressure was changing by the way the kids were behaving. I've never heard that. Yeah, Tell look it up. That. It's fascinating. And so I think I'm having a shitty attitude because the <laughs> pressure is changing. <laughs> but you know, you would think I would have the tools to adapt. Even I was getting in the shower. My husband was trying to like lighten me up because I was very heavy, feeling like very heavy. And I go, I, out of the shower, I screamed, I have to adjust it. (laughs) But I was getting a real challenge adjusting my attitude myself today too. So I reached out to some people that um, I'm in very involved in Al-Anon and I went to an Al-Anon meeting and that helped. And now I'm here with all you beautiful women. 
And I know that'll help raise my vibration too. Yeah. So I'll just stop and just soak it all in. <laughs> yeah. mm. Beautiful. Mm. So here's the chuckle for you. <laughs> Speaking of chuckles. <laughs> So I haven't done a yoga, any yoga in like two years. So I went from like working in a brewery, doing yoga before I went there because, you know, I needed to be able to survive the day walking eight, 10 miles a day to like needing to do yoga at night so I could sleep. Right. To like for two years, nothing. And I got that today. <laughs> It, it was so funny. It's amazing <laughs> how that happens. Like I, you know, like just, you know, how, what's it called when you're just on your hands and your knees and you're little lost uh, Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. whatever that is. Like yeah. I t literally couldn't even hold that position. And I just started laughing. I'm like, wow. <laughs> So I had a very humbling, yeah. humbling experience on the mat today. A little physical mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's the good. meaning that you made out of it. Yeah. Oh, it was funny. Like I'm not making any meaning out of it, except that I have been paying attention to my, my uh, spiritual wellness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank him. that's what I was thinking you've been doing a lot of work on the computer and yeah. doing your counseling program and your yeah. attention has just been somewhere else yeah yeah and so, it's all good it's, yeah. and it's all good mm -hmm. so um yeah and I mean you know mm -hmm. one cat cow is plenty yeah <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> a child pose that's my jam. Yeah. Oh, I love that <laughs> one. Shavasana is my jam. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, congratulations for getting back on the mat, Amanda. Thank yeah. you. Thank yes. You. What about Morgan or Drusilla? You want to do a quick little check-in before we dive into our topic? Hmm. Well, I don't really have much to share. Mm -hmm. I maybe had a little bit of a weird morning. It kind of started out like I was supposed to drive up to South Carolina to see my sister. And with the time change, it was, it was really dark at the time that I could leave before traffic, you know, traffic in Atlanta, it's crazy. So then I said, well, I'll just wait until after traffic. And then I'll get up and leave. Then I got up, left the house, and forgot all my stuff. So that was miles away from the house. And then I said, well, shit, I'm just not going to go. <laughs> so then I just went to the grocery store and came back home. And that was really difficult for me because... I, I just like to be a person of my word. Mm -hmm. And I told my sister I was coming today. Yeah. And so, and then I just had to release it from myself and say, you know, stop being so hard on yourself. You know, it's not the end of the world that you didn't go today. You can go tomorrow or Thursday. And so, yeah, that's kind of how my day started, but it's been smooth selling ever since. So I feel good. I feel like I made the right decision not to go. For whatever reason, I think spirit was telling me just relax right? because we had a two and a half hour delay on coming back from Florida last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I wasn't well rested this morning and, and all that. So I probably wouldn't have been taking good energy there to see my sister. So yeah. Well, what I love about what you shared, Drusilla, is how you so quickly had compassion for yourself and stopped beating yourself up for not being a woman of your word, which you really are. I, it's it's just such a fine line, isn't it? To mm -hmm. know exactly um, what to do and what not to do and when to stop being so um, like hard on ourselves and give ourselves some grace and compassion. And so I just really love that you yeah. were able to do that for yourself so quickly. 
Hmm. Yeah, I did. But, you know, the thoughts were there. It's negative thoughts, you know, because I, I really wanted to go Friday, um, well, Thursday of last week, and I was getting ready for the trip. So I said, oh, I will certainly go when I get back. And then because I didn't go, it just felt, you know, at first. Um, and then I'm like, it's no pressure. I put the pressure on myself, you know, so. Yeah. Well, let's all just beam your sister some love right now. <laughs> What's her name again? Remind yes. me. Linda. Let's just beam Linda some love. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, and let's just beam everybody that's listening right now some love. Yes. 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 Yeah. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are not alone. You are supported. You are seen. You yeah. are heard. You are a divine being. Yeah. Cared for and protected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time we do this practice, that. I picture the Care Bear stare. That's like the visual that I get. What? I don't remember that, Morgan. What? Tell me what it is again. The Care Bears, they all like link arms and blast like rainbows of light out of their chest. So that's the Care Bear stare. <laughs> okay. So we're the five lemons lighting up the world. <laughs> <laughs> I learned something new today. Yay. The Care Bears. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Which Me Care Bear too. are you, Morgan? I don't remember their names enough to, to speak to that, but Ooh. I'm one of them. <laughs> maybe maybe a pink one or a purple one it's on the day of the week, I guess. Yeah. Love your name, Morgan. Yeah. Love appearing as Morgan. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. We did we changed our names. I met um the support group that I could facilitate met on Sunday and we were talking about how in the way of mastery, he says, when people ask you who you are, um, why not respond with the truth? Like blow their socks off. Don't, don't say where you're from or what you do for a living or tell them about your family. Like tell them that you are uh, Christ. You are the, you are the love of God. Tell, like step into those big words and, um, yeah, so I've just decided to change my name on here <laughs> as a small gesture. I'm not sure if I'm ready to take that big of a step, but this is my little small. So Morgan, we're on Zoom right now. We're recording on Zoom. And then on the Zoom screen, we each get to name ourselves. And all of the other limonettes have our boring names and that's what we're talking about i and have a heart after mine don't oh, say yeah, boring yeah. come yeah. on yes you do <laughs> sorry penny sorry penny <laughs> so and so morgan froze like, yeah yep. it looks like morgan froze so we're sending her some love for, for her technical difficulties mm. and um Let's dive into the topic. What are some automatic negative thoughts that keep reoccurring? Is anything coming to mind for anybody? Yes. So I many. Want. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. These are my, that's my main, that's my leaderboard. Mm -hmm. Um. And when I'm on doing business all day, I literally have to like, I just, I spend a lot of time watching myself. I feel like, mm -hmm. um, going through the, I can't do this. And then I do it. I really don't have a choice. Like I just take the next step. And, um, um, I've been really like slowing down and not making fast decisions. And so I've been turning it over to the universe and waiting, not making, you know, like 
I was talking to this guy today and he was like, he really worked me over his part. He was on a sales call with me and he would not let me off the phone. And I finally got off the phone and I wrote him a, an email and I said, you made me so uncomfortable today that I, I'm not willing to do business with you. Thank you. Goodbye. And, um, because I just, luckily my talked to my sister and she was like, nope, nope, nope. So I was, I followed that. Like, I don't have to do business with this guy. Cause he called me or I, we spent an hour on the phone or whatever. I can say no. And, um, and also say no and say why it's no for me. Um, I guess another fear would be like, well, you know, what if he has my answers to my marketing? <laughs> what if I need his, what he's selling? <clears throat> but um, I decided to just follow my, the feeling that I had that I didn't want to feel again. Like, so um, I just said, you know, best of luck with all your, with everything you're doing. Um, but I think what I am healing is definitely that I can't do this mm-hmm. because I can. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I got to ask you this. Yeah. How did it feel to say no? Um, I, it's, it was actually easy at first, easy it kind of at first. And then I had lingering anxiety about it. Mm-hmm. Like um, after the fact. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was like, fear of missing out. <laughs> fear of missing out, right. Fear of missing out. And um, also, just this, like, did I make the right decision? Did I make the right, just mm-hmm. this back and forth. And I felt like I had given him enough of my time and energy and, uh, it, it kept, I kept kind of buying into it. I don't know how to explain it, but, um, I had some residual stuff. It wasn't just like yeah, gone, but and- over now I feel better. Yeah. And what are you replacing those thoughts with? Like, how are you like, since that is the topic for today? (laughs) Yes. Um, Slowing down, stopping, not having a reflex action, like, oh, I'll call somebody else or, oh, you know, something like that. And then being here, it just, it's nice to be here. It's nice to laugh laugh it off and feel really loved, you know, not feel like I'm, it was stressful for me, this call, because this guy would not let me off the phone and I could have just hung up, but I didn't want to be rude. Mm -hmm. So, um, so anyway, I'm glad to be here. Yeah. I'm glad you're here too. Thank you. Me too. Thank you. Thank you. I can relate to that. Like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Mine is more like, um, it's not necessarily that I can't do it. It's that um, I have a fear of getting it wrong. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. Getting it wrong. Looking silly. Um, Yeah. So I'm, I, um, I believe I've talked about it here before developing a workshop for, um, restaurant employees and I'm doing a test with some friends some co my coworkers on it's coming up this Monday and all kinds of stuff is coming up like fear of nobody showing up fear of they won't relate to the message fear of just yeah fear of failure is a big one for me fear of failure and uh so a lot of that is coming up for healing mm-hmm. and what, I'm, what, and how to deal with it and what I'm doing and all kinds of stuff. So what I'm working to replace that fear of failure is being gentle with myself that even if nobody shows up, that doesn't mean I'm a failure, right? That doesn't mean I'm a failure. So like really looking at, for me, it's um, what I'm using is really looking at what 
I'm afraid of with this specifically? Is it really true? Is it really true? I'm asking myself that question. Really true. So am I really a failure if nobody shows up? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If, is, are people really not going to relate to anything that I say? No, that's probably not true either. I mean, some of it, you know, I'm hoping that it will be re well received. My intention for it is to be well received. If someone isn't available to hear something, well, that's okay too, right? Like it's just, so that's, that's the tool that I'm using. Is it really true? Mm -hmm. It's a great question to mm -hmm. redirect yourself with. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so that's my story. That's the fear I'm working on. Sorry, Drusilla, I didn't mean to talk over you. No, I just had a, a follow up to that. I've always heard that a fear of failure is really, in its essence, a fear of succeeding. Do you uh, think that is possibility? I know that is a possibility because um, as we are on this journey together of healing, like a fear of power success, mm -hmm. influence, that's a real thing. That it is a is. real thing. If, if I get super clear, like how is, you know, super clear, if my words are powerful, like how are they going to land? How are they going to be used? Like, I would never want to hurt anyone. I would never want any harm to come. So there is a fear of success. There's a fear of being seen. Um, there's a fear of being heard. Like I still have a hard time listening, re-listening to this podcast, you know, to this podcast. So there's, mm -hmm. there's that. And at the same time, I'm like, I am ready. I am a powerful <laughs> being I am changing the world with every thought and it just is scares the hell out of me yeah. so that is that that's a you know good and thank you for bringing that up just so like because that is a big part of it too so along yeah. oh, go ahead just no I want to hear what you have to say Benny. I was going to say along time ago in a far off land <laughs> I was a salesperson an outside salesperson and I, I knew I was, I don't know. Well, okay. I was going to say, I don't know how I got the jobs, <laughs> but I, I, I really wanted to be a successful salesperson. Right. And so I got jobs in sales and a lot of them were like straight commission. So I was really motivated to work. But the point I wanted to make is that I would go to the sales calls and I'd like, oh, shit, am I going to be able to, you know, at first I'd have the automatic negative thoughts. Like they're not going to want my product. They're not going to, I'm not going to know how to answer their hard technical questions. Oh shit. I don't know enough. I, all of that. And then I listened to um, Brian Tracy. He's I, he was like the grandfather of sales success. I mean, he's quite old right now anyway. And he had these great, I think they were, probably to begin with cassette tapes I was listening to <laughs> talking a while back, like 34 years ago. And so, and then I, I think I went to DVDs, but anyway, um, I would listen to his, um, his uh, sales instruction. And he said, and I followed it that as I was driving to my sales calls, cause it was outside sales, I would say to myself, I'm the best data salesperson that these people have ever seen. They're going to want my product. They're going to want it in every location internationally. And they're just going to love what I have to bring to them. And I would say that to myself, chant it to myself as I was driving to my appointments. <laughs> and I, I was in the um, top 2% of salespeople in AT&T at the time after I did all this. It was like pretty amazing. It really works. Um, when you can redirect yourself and yeah. And I learned what I needed to learn to continue on with the sales. So that's when you were saying that, Amanda, it just reminded me of that, that I have that. I loved Brian Tracy. He was such a 
great motivational speaker for me. <laughs> he really helped me. Yeah. Yeah, I asked that question because I think for me now, it it is definitely a fear of success more than it is failure. I think that I, younger, when I was younger, it was, or at least I thought it was a fear of failure, but the more I prove myself and the more I see that I have the ability to do whatever I choose to do, then I can't really use fear of failure as an excuse anymore, right? This is what has happened with me. And now it's like, okay, I, I realize what it really is. It's the fear of shining too bright and being, you know, just really showing up as our true light and love in the universe. It's in knowing what our power is. I'm fearful of it. It's, it's really, I don't know how to describe it. I know you all here know talking about, but anybody want to chime in on what it is and why we feel that way? Well, we do have the um, Marianne Williamson quote that everyone knows. What? It's not our you know it. I know you know it. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. Mm -hmm. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We are born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Yep. Love that. Love it. Yeah. And, and I totally get the fear behind it too, right? Yeah. Because then like if I'm a smashing success, how is my life going to look? Is my life going to change? Am I going to have to live somewhere else? Am I going to have to change my friends? Am I going to have to blah, 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 or whatnot, or so and so forth, right? It's the change. Mm -hmm. I've often thought that I'll probably end up, I'll have to get divorced because my husband won't want to come along with me and <laughs> I'm in the spotlight. It's just so funny how I can catastrophize, like all these things are going to happen if I'm successful. <laughs> I am successful if I'm more successful. Yeah. 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 I think we all have some of those like weird thoughts about what it might look like and feel like, but I don't know. It's, it's, um, I've often wondered where it actually really, really comes from. Is it like through childhood or I don't know the light? What is it about the light that is fearful? I don't know. What do you think, Morgan? I think this just came to me. I think it's a fear of being misunderstood, but then there is also judgment in that, like that other people wouldn't be able to understand these universal truths that we're sharing. Like there's a little bit of ego in that, like that kind of subversive, you know what I mean? Like, um, sharing our light is not sharing something that is like unattainable that other people can't grasp. So like, why are we afraid that they're not going to get it or they're not going to understand what we're about? I don't know. And, and maybe I'm just, I'm just speaking for myself. That may not be what anybody else experiences, but I just had that light bulb moment that it's just another form of egoism getting in the way like thinking that it's like oh, they're not going to understand this <laughs> yeah and like they'll judge us like mm -hmm. yeah 
Yeah. And what came up for me while you were talking to Morgan is like, uh, somebody will say like, who does she think she is? You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we should challenge ourselves to step into that. Not as if we're not challenging ourselves being here right now. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. But next step is, huh, I don't know. How would I challenge myself next? Um, probably doing something really grand in front of a bunch of people. Like that would really, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear what that is. Yeah, I want to hear more. <laughs> and please share more. <laughs> no, I'm saying that is probably like that would have to be like the next step. The you know, the the fear, like anything else having to do with abilities, I, I just don't feel the fear anymore. So it would have to be public and it would have to be big and grand, you know. Um, yeah, I don't. Don't ask me what that is. And I'm afraid now even talking about it because it'll show up for me. Oh, it's coming, girl. You already yeah. called. Yeah. I witnessed it. And you got you to share the date and time with us too so we can be there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. It's witnessed. It's done. Oh, my it's goodness. Hmm. What about you all? What would be next to get over the fear, like, to be the light and to walk into your destiny? Well, I think another way to ask that would be what excites you. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel like fear and excitement are two sides of the same coin. So Morgan, what excites you? <laughs> Honestly, like. Um, Honestly. Do you yeah, it? all. <laughs> you yes. All of the, any, um, the, all of this talking with you. I mean, this is going to sound like Jennifer Hadley, but talking about God, talking about spirituality, mm -hmm. um, being in fellowship and in communion with other like-minded people, like that is what excites me. And I just like, I live with so much more peace and joy and freedom every day than I used to. And I just want that experience for everyone. So just sharing that with others but um yes I hold myself back because I still think I have so much more to learn <laughs> well that sounded like a TED talk <laughs> <laughs> nice thank you okay that's our next step it. yay go Morgan <laughs> Turner TED okay. talk <laughs> <laughs> so Morgan since our topic is fears and how what we're changing and and you know like what are we replacing it with so I heard you say that um well, I can't think of it now your fear of no of not knowing of needing to learn more right so what are you replacing that thought with I, I guess just, I am perfect as I am that there's a, there's a chant, like a prayer chant song that I listen to on one of my uh, Spotify playlists. And that song is playing in my head and response well, to that Chant question. it out. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm not like Penny. I don't have her voice, but it's like, there's a little humming and then it's, I am perfect as I am. I'll have to share it. Um, in our That's show good. notes Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> sounded good yeah uh, well it's just just that over and over again it's just a ma mantra chant say it chant it one more time morgan share mm -hmm. your life i am perfect as i am no <laughs> you're not yeah. morgan it sounded fabulous <laughs> You sounded awesome. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, Who's that by? Um, let me look it up. So here's something completely off the wall that's really funny. So I was doing in a horseback, I was doing 
my horse lesson the other day and uh the trainer, Lisa is her name, was like, try to keep a consistent pace. And she said, I teach, you know, I used to teach the kids to hum a little tune to keep on, you know, to keep a consistent pace. And she's like, but you can use whatever you want. I'm like, tell me the kid tune. And she's like, trot, 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 little pony trot, 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 trot. So here I am, 50 something going around the circle. Trot, 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 little pony trot, loud enough for her to hear it. I'm like, did you hear me singing? She's like, oh yeah. (laughs) That sounds really joyful, Amanda. Oh, I had a ball. I had a ball. River had fun too. And we stayed on beat. So sorry, I I digress. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's those little, those little things in life that when we focus on those, when I focus on those, just life is better, more loving, more kind, more gentle. Mm -hmm. Because it's not the big things, it's the little things that matter most. Amen, sister. Mm -hmm. And what if we don't even need to know where the fear comes from? We just have it. And we just do something about it anyway. Surrender it. Yeah. 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 Just like we're doing with this podcast, have the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Befriend it. I think too, we have to just ask it like, what, what's your purpose? (laughs) Like why? Yeah. And of course, miracles would say it's just, separation it just keeps you from it's just more thinking that keeps you from the good stuff yeah from god from the universe from from knowing goodness is happening and it for me it's that like, figure it out stuff i remember listening to lisa natoli um and she was talking about every time you get on the computer to find a, an answer to a question no that's your ego like just that yeah. analyze, find answers, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's that, and I am listening to this amazing meditation this year um, about efforting and being effortless. And it really has reminded me to stop pushing the rocks up the hill, stop mm-hmm. making an effort to make either make something happen or figure out an ending. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so maybe it's just like feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that, oh, by that um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like fear is, or even like emotions are like thoughts, like they come into our awareness and we don't have to claim them. We don't have to own them. We can just allow them not resist them, but not own them. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, Mm -hmm. just like in a meditative practice, when a thought appears, like you don't have to latch onto it. Well, I think it was lesson 70 or 71. I'm going to see if I can quickly find it just recently. Um, It talked about um, the thoughts that come into your mind, treat them as if they're clouds. And, you know, there's clouds that they just float across the sky and just let them float across your mind and then just keep brushing them away. Feel the the mist on your cheek and just keep brushing them away until you get to the light. And so, um, yeah, I think these fearful thoughts can be just like clouds and they just pass by. Mm -hmm. We get to the light. Yeah. Yeah. And I also. mm -hmm. You go ahead, Amanda. I just wanted to to pause here for someone that's listening, you know, that is, is that um, has lots of them all the time running around in their brain, but you know, it, it just stopping one at a time, just beginning having the intention to allow your mind to change about things gets the ball rolling. So Um, I just wanted to put that out there. We're all in different places on our spiritual Mm -hmm. journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, just pausing. Mm -hmm. Say, wow, that was a negative thought I just thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to share this other quote from A Course in Miracles that I have always really loved. It says, the necessary condition for the holy instant does not require that you have no thoughts that are not pure, but it does require that you have none that you would keep. Mm -hmm. And That's yeah, good. so it's like we don't have to be completely negative thought free, like, and that's probably unattainable while we're in this human form anyway. But just again, not to latch on to them, be willing to get them up and replace them. I love that too, Morgan. And mm -hmm. I, and I think the, the logic behind that is that. The healing is actually in the awareness that you are aware that their thoughts and they're separate from you. You know, I remember the first time realizing that my thoughts weren't me. <laughs> I was like, holy cow, I actually have control of this stuff. It, it seems silly, but it, that's, that's what awareness is. Yeah. yeah. And, and what I've been working with for the past few months that's been helpful to me is um, just distracting myself when the negative thoughts start because like attracts like. So if I'm having negative thoughts, then I can't think my way out of it. I'm just attracting more negative thoughts to myself. So just distracting myself. Like sometimes I'll I'll do, nope, not interested. Like I'll, or I'll say, or I'll say a quick prayer, like giving this to you, Holy Spirit, or cancel that thought or whatever. And then just move to something that I know lifts my vibration. Maybe I'll take the dogs for a walk or um, put on some music or just do something distracting to get my mind off of it, which, you know, the world might think that's living in la la land or spiritual bypassing but it i don't think it is i think it's distracting myself and intentionally moving myself into a higher vibration so that i can receive those truer thoughts into my awareness instead and that's been helpful to me cuz i can be hyper analytical and try to think myself out of it and then i just get stuck in a circle and it's no good no bueno I think um, one of the thing, one a spiral that I've in the past have been in is trying to do stuff like let the thoughts flo float away like clouds and not attach and stuff, and then I start judging myself. So it that's kind of how I had to like whittle away these little things, one little whittle mm -hmm. at a time. I had to say um, acceptance is my answer to everything today. Okay. So I accept myself. I am a human being that thinks negative thoughts. I'm not going to get pissed at myself. I'm not going to think I'm a loser because I can't stop it. I'm going to realize this is just part of the game being human and then not beating myself up for that. Cause I mean that, I think that was my huge pattern as you know, before I really started working on this, working on thoughts and letting go of negative thoughts would be how critical I was on myself because I kept doing it over and over and I couldn't get it. Um, and then, um, Drusilla, I wrote down when you said the healing, healing is in the awareness. I mm -hmm. think then you end up at this place where you start watching yourself. You're aware mm -hmm. of your actions and you, you're, you can almost choose them. You can more easily as you watch yourself choose. Yes, I will react this way. Or I've been, I've had plenty of times where I knew I was yelling at my husband, let's say. And in my mind, I'm like, why are you doing this? There's no reason to be doing this. And I am just taking it to the limit. <laughs> and so um, then you start watching those kind of things. And again, I would get in the judgment thing. I'm so, oh, I'm so bad. Um, and, but it's, that step is helpful to get out of. 
that really helps the toxicity, I think, for me, is to get rid of all that criticism of myself. I, would I agree. love that. Yeah. I've had that very same experience too. Mm -hmm. Like having an out-of-body experience, watching myself behave like a lunatic and like... <laughs> And still behave like a lunatic <laughs> yes full awareness of it like shaking my head at myself and still continue carrying on <laughs> yeah okay. mm -hmm. and like melissa said like that or drusilla said that's the power like that's the power it mm -hmm. completely shifts the vibration for me, I, you know, when I've done that before, like I can, it, there's not as much whatever anger or whatever I'm yelling yeah. about, right? It takes the, the, the power out of it, right? So I even think that it's received differently from whomever is on the receiving end of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. We may not yeah, all of us. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> We may not even be aware of how many times we've done it before we became aware of it. Mm -hmm. That's the really powerful thing about all this. Yeah. Sorry, Morgan. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's like we're an actor in that moment when we have that awareness, like we're just going through the part. We've rehearsed it so many times. It's just <laughs> like, it, this is just what I'm doing. This is what I've always done. And I'm just going to continue to play this part because it's what feels natural. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's funny. That's true. That's true. Uh -huh. And taking the, for me, taking the power out of it really opened the door to um, like being on, like really being honest with what I'm expressing and also opening the door for, I'm sorry, I reacted that way. Like it, it just, it takes the, yeah. the relationship to a whole nother level that it's the awareness, good awareness, Drisella. <laughs> yeah, it really does take the sting out of it. I like, like that part because I found that after I'd shown my ASS, <laughs> that I, like it diffuses itself it's like it's it's almost like it didn't happen or something for me it doesn't yeah it doesn't cling to me anymore I don't feel that judgment so much as aware that I did that and it wasn't a nice thing and we're moving on you know mm -hmm. yeah So y'all, we're coming, we're just about to the end. Any final thoughts before Morgan does our announcements? Well, let's just, just stamp out those ants. Automatic negative <laughs> thoughts. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say the name of the, the artist who does that song that I did not do justice to is a beautiful <laughs> chorus and they are amazing. I love all of their songs. They're so good. Okay. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah. And Morgan, I would invite you to let go of the negative thought that you didn't do that song justice. Yes. <laughs> it was beautiful. Okay. Yes. Note taken. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah. For the gentle reminder. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for, to remind each other. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Are we complete? I All right. So. Well, then I'll just invite our audience to visit our website, fivelemonslaughing.com. And thanks to Melissa's valiant efforts, we can now be found on the Apple Podcasts. Um, also Spotify, Audible, I think pretty much all the, the platforms. So Wherever you're listening, please subscribe, like, download, comment, review, whatever you can do to support us. We appreciate it. And we love you. Yes. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Have a beautiful day. <laughs>